Welcome back. All right. Um, so news of the day. I didn't have this yesterday. I don't think I had one on Saturday either. Because again, we're kind of this quiet time where there's not a whole lot going on. But there's some good news. Eugene Melnick is excited for a 2020-2021 season. The reason that's good news is Eugene Melnick, you would have to think, would be one of the owners saying, look, I'm losing money. I'm not, I don't want to have a season. Now, he acknowledges as well in his optimism that there are 31 different ideas for how to get this done. And the owners are not united right now on what the plan should be going forward. But the fact that he's optimistic about there being a season is good news. And that, you know, as soon as possible, we should figure out a way to get this done. Agreed with Eugene Melnick on that. And you can write that down and go, okay, Shannon agreed with Eugene Melnick on November 16th, 2020. <laughs> um, Jack Quinn signs his entry-level contract with the Sabres. Kevin Adams is very excited about Jack Quinn, feels that he is a Sabre, and that he'll be a very solid addition. I like the Jack Quinn pick. Mildly, I mean, there were other picks that were there that they might have been able to take, and I know there are some that don't like the Sabres taking Quinn that early, but... He was a, a, a fast-rising prospect. He's seen as a guy who can play potentially at both ends of the ice and put up a bunch of goals. Those players don't grow on trees. Not that there's any such thing as a player that grows on trees. How many different times in society do we say X doesn't grow on trees? And then when you look at it, you go, yeah, no, it never does. So, yeah, um, we'll, we'll see how Quinn develops for Buffalo and whether or not they give him a look right out of training camp this year. I don't think they need to. I think with the additions to the roster they've got, they should be fine. But he's a goal-scoring left winger. You just at least give him a look because eventually he may be the winger for Eichel. Uh, yeah, so good job Buffalo getting him signed. The Washington Capitals logo looks wrong next to Henrik Lundqvist's name. Lundqvist has confirmed what I think we all kind of knew. So he leaves the Rangers, he goes to the Capitals, but he's still saying that after he retires, he's going to end up back in the New York Rangers organization. He's not sure of what that role will be, what he's going to do in the Rangers organization. He just knows that post-retirement, he's still going to be a member of the Rangers. So uh, that's, that's good news. It shows that there were no hard feelings when they parted ways, and good for him. Um, Zadina, if you're following Detroit prospects, a lot of them are doing very well. Berggren's another one is doing very well. Of course, I've talked about Raymond. But Zadina's off to a fantastic start in the Czech League. And they're having a hard time keeping him off the scoreboard. So if you're a Detroit fan, again, the future looks very, very bright. I think the present is still up in the air as to whether or not they're 31st overall this coming season. But the future is very bright. Eiserman knows what he's doing. Um, I also want to say, yes, I know NCAA hockey is back. Uh, they were back this, this weekend played a bunch of games. There were a lot of prospects playing in those games. I, I, I've i thought about it, you know, a few times. And I, I don't want to just have a whole board full of, here's what this guy did, and because it, it's just going to be pure straight stats. And when I was doing stats videos for the NHL, again, it, it didn't attract a, a ton of interest, and, and it's just going to be just a wall of names and numbers. So here and there, like with Zadina, uh, and with others, I will talk about, you know, who's standing out this week and who's doing pretty well this week and that kind of thing, whether it's KHL, Swedish League, Liga, whatever it is, um, you know, I'll talk about it. But in general, yes, I know NCAA hockey's back. I know Holloway had a good uh, debut uh, this weekend as well. Uh, there are some pretty solid prospects who are doing very well, and we'll see how that, how that goes and how that uh, plays itself out. Uh, Tampa Bay showing that we're still going through this tremendous economic slowdown. The Tampa Bay Lightning have laid off 30 of their staff, which is less than 10% of their overall workforce. But it shows again that there are still layoffs going on around the NHL world. And I don't know that hockey coming back necessarily stops that. Let's just say that we have 31 teams playing their home rinks. Well, if you don't have full attendance, and if, if the team's not generating the kind of revenue you're used to, then that's a problem. Um, that's that means that we could still see layoffs even with the NHL coming back. We could still see teams having to to trim their bottom line. Um, and and again, you know, 2020 we've seen plenty of that throughout the league. And Tampa's just another team that's doing that. But the good news is anybody who was a full time employee at the time they won the Stanley Cup is still supposed to get a cup ring. They've already said you get your Stanley Cup ring as a full time employee. So that's that's good news if you're. Uh, an employee or now a former employee as well. So 
Uh, we'll see how that goes and what the rings look like. I've always thought Stanley Cup rings aren't as, as beautiful as they could be. I don't know. They're, sports championship rings are kind of gaudy, but I guess people like that. And, uh, you know, just from a sports perspective, you want it to be kind of gaudy and over the top. It, it, I don't know. It's a little, <laughs> some of them are a little much. And we could definitely talk about, you know, between baseball, basketball, football, and hockey, which ones are, are, are most over the top, but they could be pretty gaudy. And huge. It's like you can't you can't just wear that casually. Um, oh, this thing? It's just yeah, it's like five pounds and it's bigger than your hand. Um, so yeah, uh, Tampa. We'll we'll see uh, when those um, staff are hired back, and just around the league in general, when people are hired back, when we start to see things get better. I would say in less than six months, we'll see most people start getting hired back and businesses ramping themselves back up again. Um, so keep in mind, if, if January 1st is going to be the start date and training camps are two weeks before, so training camps will be around December 15th, um, and for the seven teams that missed the play-in round, they're supposed to get seven to ten extra days. They may get an extra exhibition game. We haven't heard anything about exhibition games right now. I would think maybe you get one for the 24 teams. Maybe you get two for the other seven. Again, that would involve travel. That would involve uh, other issues with that. And for Ottawa, they're the only Canadian team that didn't play in the return. So do they play against themselves, right? Because there's the 14-day quarantine in Canada. So due to the 14-day quarantine in Canada, the Senators would need to start recalling guys this week. So if we don't see guys getting recalled this week, that means that the start date for the NHL could very well be getting pushed back. It's one of those things to watch because why not? We're we're waiting for stuff to happen. That's why the retro jerseys were such huge news today, because yeah, um, there's there's not much else going on. Now I have to make mention of this. This is really kind of funny, and I'm going to pick these up too. I've had these in my room for a couple weeks, and I'm going to put them up. Uh, I've got an Oilers banner, which is that's their their old logo, and uh, up to the current ones. It, there's so little difference between the second and third on this one, and then I've got. Uh, a Rangers one here as well that shows they don't really change. This one's this one's ugly. This one's okay. This one's nice. Uh, this one's fun, and I think that was probably the best of the four, to be honest. But it's funny because I've got these. I'm going to put them up on the wall in the background. And yet they're two of the teams that I've been told that I hate in the last 24 hours. <laughs> I, I regularly have Canuck fans saying I, I I don't like the Canucks. That I'm not really a fan. Uh, I've been told, just the last 24 hours I've read that I hate Toronto, Islanders, Oilers, Flames, St. Louis, Rangers, Canucks, Red Wings as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's almost a third of the league. I spend 365 days a year covering hockey, and the idea that I would hate that many teams, it's got, it would be exhausting. Hate is such a strong word. Even... Let's just throw Montreal on the board just under here. I haven't been accused of hating Montreal. Oh, you can't even see it down there, can you? Uh, so we'll put Montreal just up in here. I don't even hate Montreal at this point. And I did for many years. It was, I can't stand Montreal. Uh, Pittsburgh. Well, Shannon must hate Pittsburgh. I, I really don't. There's a reason why when I did my 31 favorite teams this year that I, I didn't even do them in like a 1 through 31 order because it's it's not a thing anymore. Uh, and and I, I can honestly say that when you watch all 31 teams, when you watch every single game in the league, and you're not watching any one team any more than any other, and I don't. I don't watch any team more than any other. The the exceptions might be the teams on the East Coast that play a lot of um, the, the matinee games because I'll be able to watch the entire games. And the California teams, they usually start at 7.30 rather than 7 o'clock. So I'm able to watch more of those games because there's nothing else on during those times. And what's weird is uh, they're not teams that I generally cheer for that play in either of those games. So Vancouver's normally 7 o'clock start. It's rare at 7.30. Uh, Dallas is right in the middle. They're not at late or early start. And Boston doesn't play a ton of matinee games. And when they do, eh. Um, and, and so it's, it's bizarre to me that... Uh, yeah, that's that's still, and I I do find it entertaining. When I woke up this morning, uh, before I did the, uh, the the power rankings and and I did the the jersey reveal videos, I said to Yvonne, I said I look forward to seeing which teams I hate today, and she laughed and said, right, 
and and it is it is interesting because if I was covering something and I really couldn't stand that many teams, I wouldn't have a hockey channel. I I wouldn't have dedicated it to covering every team as much as possible. Obviously, I'm going to talk more about Vancouver because it's just an hour down the street and all that. But you know, this is this is a Seals jersey. Now I can wear North Stars and Seals because the Seals moved to moved to Cleveland and then they merged with the Stars. So when Cleveland went out of business, they merged with Dallas. And it's it's different shade of green, mildly, but not huge. And I, I don't have an actual Oakland hat. I have a California hat, which is the yellow C instead of the blue O. I really hate, you know, even even San Jose. I had I had a total hate on for San Jose, and then we go to Vegas and I meet some San Jose fans and I'm talking about San Jose. And I'm like, damn it. So and then when players move around, uh, it it changes things for me too. I find, and I know Bob McKenzie uh, was one that I, I believe I've seen say this, a couple others as well, that uh, when you cover the whole league, you find yourself a fan more of players than of teams. So certain players you're rooting for more than you're rooting for the teams. I obviously, you know, I'm very, very transparent on, on three teams that I root for, no matter what, good and bad and ugly. But uh, it, it, it really just depends on, on the players. There are players on every team in the league right now that I like very much. And that's what happens when you watch all 31 teams. But thank you guys for your support along the way. And even to people who say, you hate my team that's the spirit i was in anaheim i hated anaheim this channel started out anaheim was 31st and then there was like 18 miles between them and 30th on my favorite teams list and 30th i think was montreal or san jose i hated them i don't anymore i i really don't so um i do find it entertaining it it is very entertaining and um yeah so there you go uh, and, and there is, of course, the video I did on this channel already, the 30, 31 teams that I hate in 25 minutes, how I hate every team in the league. And so I think of that video when I see things like this. I, I can dislike a jersey and like a team as well. And I can like a team and dislike their jersey. I don't find a connection there at all. Um, I, I really don't. Because if, if I did, then why is it that of all the teams in the league, I would consistently have the Kings as as my my favorite jerseys when they release things why would i constantly give them an a uh, even their current jersey set which i think is kind of meh it's still pretty so there's that but thank you guys so much for all your support even if you think i hate a team that i don't thanks um don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video and hey thank you guys so much for for all your support for today and all the other days as well i will talk to you again soon